Hey, hey, Cub fans. Thanks for joining us here on Cubs 24-7, where Randy talks Cubs. Cubs uh, lost to the A's today, uh, dropping from 15-9 uh, and nine to 15-10 and 10 on the spring. Uh, A's won 3-1, to one and one hit the Cubs. Cubs had one hit. We were hitless through six, and um, we ended up getting the one run on Ezekiel Pagan's solo home run in the seventh inning with two outs left on left. So it was a pretty good uh, at-bat for, for young Ezekiel. But we'll go through it. But I just wanted to sort of talk a little bit about sort of the status, where we are. So injury-wise, Wisdom and Madrigal, we'll start with them. It's looking more likely than not that they will not be available um, on opening day. So we're going to take the idea, okay, Madrigal and Wisdom are now sort of out of out of the mix. And pitching-wise, Jamison Tyone, we got, I think, good news today. Jamison Tyone uh, threw 10 pitches today. So he's back to throwing. So now it would just be a matter of sort of ramping him back up. So that's good news. It doesn't look like it's going to be something, hopefully, that's going to keep Jamison out for a long period of time. But he's not going to be ready for opening day, I wouldn't think. It's it's too close. So the idea that we've got um, Madrigal and Wisdom, who most likely at this point look like they won't be ready for opening day. And then we've got Talkman and... Um, Michael Bush that are sort of well Michael Talkman has already been told that he's he's made the opening day lineup and it looks pretty clear to me that Michael Bush is there as well. So we're sort of looking at maybe three different spots now that are sort of up for grabs. And that's one of the reasons I found the lineup interesting is uh, let me give you the the players that I feel are sort of in the mix for these we'll call them these three spots left. Miles Master Boney uh, David Bodie, Garrett Cooper, Alexander Canario, Dom Smith, and David Peralta are the, the guys that I think you could at least discuss uh, the merits of them you know, making the opening day lineup. And I think three of them uh, will, uh, considering, again, Wisdom, Madrigal are out, Michael Bush, and Talkman are already in. So what was interesting when I saw the lineup is that uh, five of those guys were in the in the lineup. So let's go ahead and we go through the lineup, and then I'll talk a little bit about some of these numbers. Uh, Michael Talkman uh, was in left field leading off. Nico played shortstop today, hitting second. Bellinger was in center field, hitting third. Garrett Cooper played first base, hitting cleanup. David Peralta DH'd in the fifth hole. Uh, Amaya caught in the sixth spot. And Miles Mastroboni got a start at third base. Uh, Alexander Canario uh, played right field, hitting eighth. And David Bodie got a start at second base, hitting ninth. So when I saw that, it, I, it, it just struck me as interesting. So I kind of wanted to see where these guys uh, stand coming into today. So here's some numbers. Um, Miles Mastroboni came into today with 36 at-bats, 10 hits, two doubles, a home run. Uh, seven strikeouts, two walks, hitting 278 with a 308 on base and a 417 slug for a 725 OPS and four steals. So those are some some decent numbers for a, a versatile left-handed hitting Miles Mastroboni. David Bode came, came in today uh, hitting 233 with a 283 on base but a 605 slug. 888 OPS, 43 at bats. He's got 10 hits, uh, five home runs, and two walks, 10 strikeouts. So that's that's David Bodie again, a a versatile player who can pretty much play all the positions in the infield and can play some outfield as well. So Miles and David Bodie provide defensive versatility. Uh, one lefty, one righty, one with more pop than the other. Just just kind of interesting. Then we go to Garrett Cooper. Uh, came in today hitting 300 with 417 on base and a 650 slug. His OPS over 1,000 at uh, 1,067. Just 20 uh, at-bats, two home runs, five RBIs. So Garrett Cooper. And Garrett can play some outfield. He plays some first base. Of course, he can DH, right-handed hitter. Canario played today. 
He came in with 42 at bats, 10 hits, two doubles, no home runs, only two RBIs, um, nine walks, 10 strikeouts, hitting 238 with a 373 on base, and slug is down 333. So his OPS is only 706. So Canario, he still hasn't started to slug here this spring, and they've been giving him a really serious look. So outfielder, DH, right-handed hitting. Then we've got Dom Smith. Dom wasn't in the lineup today, but he's got 23 at-bats, 8 hits, a double, 1 home run. He is uh, hitting 348 with a 375 on base and a 522 slug for an OPS of 897, left-handed hitting, DH, first baseman, Dom Smith. And then the, the, uh, the other player that is intriguing is a little behind the rest because of he coming off an injury is David Peralta, nine at bats, three hits, a double, uh, two RBIs, hitting 333. So he's three for nine coming into today, uh, 400 on base, 667 slug, over 1,000 OPS. So I just wanted to throw those guys out at you. And the, it was interesting when I saw that uh, five out of the six guys were in the lineup today. So clearly we're starting to take a look and we have some decisions to make. And as I was just watching the game, these guys are all sort of veterans, right? Let's take let's take Canario and Miles out and just go with Bodie, uh, Peralta, Cooper, and Dom Smith. You know, I, I think we know what they'll do, right? So it, we, we can predict what they'll do, so now it's going to be a question of what we need. So which of those guys brings more what we happen to need as opposed to what their numbers are in the spring? So, unlike what, like maybe a Miles Master Boney and a uh, Alexander Canario, I, they're you know they're not proven veterans who've uh, sort of established themselves in a certain way. Um, so maybe their numbers this spring they need to have a better spring so we can get an idea of what maybe they can do. So I just find this this group to be an interesting lot of players. You know, David Peralta and um, he, he was a thirty home run guy. Um, and Garrett Cooper was an all-star. We, we know what David Bode is. And Dom Smith has proven that he could be a very serviceable left-handed hitting first baseman. So it's just going to be interesting to see, uh, not just on the decisions they make around performance, but around what they decide they need. So that was just my thoughts coming in. And we'll talk a little bit about what everybody did. Of course, we only had one hit. So everybody pretty much pretty much went over. Uh, Talkman went 0 for 3, uh, ground out to second, a couple of flyouts, one to center and one to right. Didn't hit the ball well at all. Nico went 0 for 3 again, ground out to shortstop, a couple of flyouts to right field. The one in the fourth inning, though, he hit hard. It, it, it The right fielder had to make a good play, had to get a good jump, had to uh, take the right path. And he flagged it down just shy of the warning track. So Nico at least hit that one pretty hard, but still went 0 for 3 today. Belly struck out looking in the first, flew out to center in the fourth, 0 for 2. Uh, Garrett Cooper went 0 for 3, uh, but hit the ball hard twice. Uh, his first at bat, he lined out to uh, left field, hit the ball. Uh, sort of a sinking line drive that the left fielder came in and caught. And then in the fifth, he flied out to uh, right field. Uh, hit the ball hard. It, it, it kind of looked like off the, the bat it might have had a chance, so he just missed it. So I thought Garrett Cooper's at-bats were pretty good, but still 0 for 3. David Peralta went 0 for 3 as well with a line out. He hit the ball right on the nose uh, in his first at-bat, line drive uh, the first baseman, so a rocket. And then he flew out to um, center field, and he flew out to left for 0 for 3. Miguel Amaya went 0 for 3 with a strikeout. A pop up to second base and a ground out second. Master Boney went 0 for 2, fly out and a grounder to second. Canario went uh, 0 for 2 with a walk, couple of fly outs. Bode went 0 for 2 with a strikeout, hit into a 6 4 3 double play in the third. And again, one hit, one walk total, seven strikeouts as a team. And the only the only action was Ezekiel Pagan uh, hitting that uh, that home run. Uh, coming in for Bellinger in the seventh inning. 
So the the minor leaguers came in. Bradley Beasley uh, got in at bat. He struck out swinging. Hayden Cantrell got in at bat, struck out swinging. Ezekiel Pagan hit that uh, home run in the seventh inning. Uh, Liam Spence got in at bat, struck out looking. And uh, Riva uh, Garcia uh, got in at bat, and he struck out swinging. So not a lot of offense today. Uh, you know, yesterday's game I described it as anemic. This was maybe a little beyond that. Uh, just uh, not much. The A's uh, pitcher that uh, uh, had us locked down for six innings just pitched really well. Five pitch mix, and he just had us. He he had our number. We we ju- we just didn't look like we were going to figure him out. If they left him in, I think he'd know hit us through nine. To be honest with you, fortunately, spring training they they pulled him, but he he was not done with us. So let's talk about the pitchers though. It's kind of another interesting day on the mound. Originally, Adbert Ozelai was scheduled to make the start. He was a late-minute scratch. I didn't know why. And so Mark Leiter Jr. ends up uh, starting the game. But we pitched eight guys, one inning apiece. So it it, it ran down like this. Mark uh, Leiter Jr. started, pitched the first inning, and did great. Struck out two, got out easily. Adbert came in, pitched the second inning, just gave up a hit. He struck out a batter, no problem. And then Hector Neris came in and had a little bit of a rough out and gave up two home runs, uh, three hits, uh, and he gave up gave up the three runs. So the three runs that the A's got were all in the third inning off of Hector Neris. Julian Merriweather came in, pitched the fourth, gave up a hit, got a double play to get out of that, and he struck out a guy. So Julian looked fine. Jose Quas had an interesting inning. He got out of it. He walked a guy and hit a guy. His first two batters, uh, he was having trouble finding his release point. So he walked the first guy he faced. Then the next guy he faced, he hit. And it looked like he was really struggling. And then all of a sudden, Jose Quas found his release point, and then he was nasty. He ends up striking out the next three. I'm, I'm telling you, this Jose Quas, if he throws strikes, they can't hit him. All right? So he got in a little bit of trouble just because he, he you know, just lost his release point. And uh, walked a guy, hit a guy. But once he found it, it, they didn't have a chance. Three Ks. Carl Jr. came in, and uh, Carl pitched the seventh and uh, or no, the sixth inning. He struck out uh, a guy, and David Bodie helped Carl Jr. out today. Uh, David Bodie made two really nice plays at second base behind Carl um, in the sixth. Richard Lovelady came in, and he pitched the uh, the seventh inning and uh, struck out two guys, and Richard Lovelady looked better. He'd had a couple of bad outings over the last, you know, probably three or four, and but he looked really good today. And then Keegan Thompson came in and pitched the eighth, just gave up the one hit, and we got out of it. So Mark Leiter Jr., Adbert Hector, Julian Quas, Carl Jr., uh, Richard Lovelady, and Keegan. So it was one inning of uh, a good look at the relievers, and they all pitched pretty well. You know, even Hector Neris giving up what he, he gave up. The first home run was a, a solo shot, and I just feel like um, he didn't. He tried to get in the guy's kitchen a little bit, and he just left it in a, a little, and the guy turned on it. Um, but I, I'm not worried. Hector Neris, he's he's going to be extremely helpful. So if you take the, Hector's sort of um, a, I don't know, we'll call it a stumble, I guess, today, uh, our, our relief pitchers did well. They came in and pretty much had it. So... Kind of an interesting game. Uh, disappointing offensive uh, showing, but still an interesting game. We're learning some things, and um, we'll just turn the page. We've got the Rockies tomorrow. Uh, Drew Smiley is scheduled to go, so we'll we'll see what we can uh, put together. The lineups are going to be interesting moving forward. We're down to about a week left. A lot of decisions to be made, uh, both in the pitching staff. Uh, a lot of decisions, so. Uh, We'll see what happens. So, guys, thanks for joining me here on Cubs 24-7 where Randy talks Cubs. Really appreciate you guys checking it out. And we'll see you tomorrow. Go Cubs, go.